Titans. Um, if you want to use that as something that's not explainable by known natural things, that may be what it is, right? There might be something that, that we just don't know about. And some people have argued, and I think they may argue correctly, that supernatural just means natural we don't know about yet. Because I don't know what the line of demarcation would be between natural and supernatural. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I, I'm, I'm just saying that you allow for the possibility that that is some some form of the spirit realm. Oh, certainly. Sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, I don't discount that off hand. Because I, I, I have experience. Do, but I don't. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Some automatically offhand and say it can't possibly be the actual spirit realm. There's got to be some completely natural explanation for that. Now, I had a lot of experiences like that prior to me becoming a Christian. Not necessarily, you know, with demons attacking my friends, but, you know, spirits, experiences like that that could not necessarily be explained other than naturally. And they, they were part of me, you know, pushing me towards becoming a Christian. Because I was like, well, why Christians? What, what is it about Christianity that you, you said of all the religions out there, um, what particularly was it that said, this is the one I'm going with? Because there's uh, tens of thousands, there's tens of thousands of denominations of, um, of Christianity. Right. I mean, I thought, I how thought, do you know which one to story. pick, right? <laughs> right. I thought I told you the story, though, when I went to church. Uh, you kind of you did. You kind of did touch on it before, yes. Well, I just felt that night very strongly like the Holy Spirit it's not that dissimilar from what happened to you when you became a Mormon, only a lot more intense. Well, let me ask you this than... thing. Okay, so you, you believe that you did feel the Holy Ghost, right? I Yes. Okay. Um, it's funny because I have related that story before, not so much on air uh, a couple times, but I've, I've talked about it over the last 20 some odd years. When it, where, how long how ago? It was 30 years ago, I guess. Wow, it's been a long time. Um, and I've actually not mentioned the details about being Mormon, right? Just you know, right. have this feeling, and I've described the feeling, and people will be like, "Oh yeah, that's the Holy Ghost," and then I'll say that it was a Mormon blessing. Oh, it couldn't have been the Holy Ghost, and I'm like, "Do you not see the problem here?" Because they they don't. Yeah, they don't like I, Mormon, I, right? I understand both both the problem that that I understand both how you see it as a problem, and I understand why they say it too. So there's there's I don't know how to explain this in any sort of coherent way, but. If you're trained to think that the Mormon Mormon is a cult, then you you're going to think automatically that that can't have been, a, have been a legitimate experience of the Holy Spirit. You know, there, there are people who will trip out about like Catholics the same way automatically. Mm-hmm. It's no, kind no, of no, 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 Catholics. My friend, you know, Jay would have never thought that. But she was a lot more liberal Catholic, you know. Right. Well, it depends on how you. It it depends on a lot of factors. Because if you have it drilled into you, if you, it depends on on how you've experienced your Christianity. Also, being grown up, sure. like if you if if you had a hardcore version of Christianity, and they told you fifty times a day, you know, don't ever become a Mormon or watch out for Mormons, or be careful of Mormons. Tells you they had a spirit, and they say, "Well, it was like it's going to be the Holy Spirit." Yeah, I got to tell you, I had a response. To what, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I got to tell you, though, I didn't have a single bad experience with the Mormon church. Um, I have nothing negative to say about any of the people. Um, yeah, the doctrine is, is you know what, is, any more, is it really any more different than any other religion? Not really. I mean, except for Scientology. That's not really religion. But, you know, it's one of those things. I, I, if you're gonna, If you're going to believe that a man walked on water and raised from the dead, then is, is it really hard then to believe that God has a body of flesh and bones that came from the planet? It's not that much of a leaf of faith. But that's irrelevant to the point is that I really liked the people, and I had good experiences with the church, um, nothing nothing relating to, to cultism or anything like that. Um, and people were like, oh, well, you're just Stockholm or something. I'm like, no. I, I Again, I, I know, since I was <laughs> six years old. No, yeah, no, they were like, you know, my friend and his brother and his mom and his, their dad, just great people, man. And I, I, it really kills me when people just throw out that word cult. And I don't think they'd mean to do it pejoratively per se. I mean, they have their own definitions of cult that I don't use um, because right. I think their their definition is so vague it can include anything. Because I even asked one person that, that – um, thinks Mormon is a cult, and he knows a lot about Mormonism. He really, really does. Um, he's called the Naked, I think it's Naked Mormon. Was that his name? Real, was that his name? I don't remember, but there's a really, really knowledgeable guy on Mormonism. And um, 
I asked him, I said, according to your definition, the Boy Scouts are a cult. He's like, yeah. I'm like, does it, does it really tell you anything then that is so ubiquitous that can be used for any type of, 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 of organization? No, to me, a cult is, you know, Jonestown, Heaven's Gate, those kind of things, right? Um, I, 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 hate, I hate to even use it with Jehovah's Witness, although I've seen cult-like activity with Jehovah's Witness, and I definitely think that, that Scientology is a cult. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, where you draw the line, it gets hard to say. It gets really, really hard to say. But I understand why people have a problem with some of the doctrine uh, that is extra to Christianity. But as most Mormons probably experience Mormonism, it's kind of a variation of Reformed Christianity, not that different from... They don't live their life on a practical level that much different than an Episcopalian or something like that because they're, 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 you know... They're not really taking the, the parts about it that are weird or out there. They're not really internalizing that and living those on a daily basis. That's where it could potentially become more cult. Does that make sense? What I just yeah, said? yeah, no, it, it does. And also kind of shows that, that certain denominations are more incorporating. Um, for example, like, you know, the Catholics would say that, you know, well, the Catholics I knew would say the Mormons are, are, are Christians. A lot of Christians, um, you know, exclude certain groups, right? I mean, the fundamentalists, the evangelicals, they're very exclusionary, exclusionary of who they say are Christians, right? It's the no true Christian fallacy. And to me, anybody who, who accepts that Jesus was who he said he was, he rose from the dead and all that stuff, that's a Christian. Now, granted, I may not agree with some of the things they say, but you're not, I, I really hate when people take people's labels away. If I, if I say, look, it, I believe this, this is who, my position, and you're like, oh, well, no, it's not. Well, some of that, some of that backfighting between sex gets crazy. I mean, I'll listen to Christians, and then they'll start talking about Catholicism, and they'll start going like, you know, the Antichrist is Catholic, and, and you know, this is, this is why Catholicism is, is heresy, and they'll, they'll start going off on it. And I'm like, you know, that's completely unnecessary. On layman's terms, for of someone who's a practicing Catholic, the things that they believe, you know, they might have some false beliefs baked into the cake, but it's not it's not my responsibility to take it out of them. It's it's irrelevant. You know, how they live their life in, in before God is what's important. Is, yeah, is and, I, and I think that God would be the one. That, look at it. If God does exist, then I rather let Him judge than half the the idiotic fundamentalists that I run into daily. Because if right. that's the if that's the person out there that's trying to convince me that God exists, God's not doing a very good job because I'm not going to buy into what they have to sell. You know, I much when I was listening, to like my friend Jade. Now I'm not a fan of the, the Catholic Church for obvious reasons, but I mean, I loved her to death and I respected her position. Um, but I would sit and listen to her for hours, off air, on air, didn't matter because we would have conversations. Never got embittered, never got embroiled. The only disagreement we ever had was over Trump, um, and I'm not a fan of Trump. But uh, or I, I wouldn't even know with Trump because I mean we both realize he's shit. But uh, more of a Reagan more than anything else than Trump. Um, she was not a fan of Reagan. I happen to like Reagan, but um, she, I, I would still listen to her, right? Even though she was Catholic, and I would never become Catholic, I still was engaging with a conversation with her. And if you can't get engaged in conversation, you're never going to try to sway anybody. So if God wants somebody to convert somebody, having a conversation with them is the only way that's going to happen. And because if you find some asshole out there and some evangelist that's just going to like tell you you're wrong, you're going to hell. The the, the backfire effect kicks in. You get in, uh, this entrenchment, and you're not going to move your position. Well, you're it not, not going to listen to them at no. all. You, no. It starts with the real conversation. It's like, for example, one of the things that I thought was probably instrumental in my becoming a Christian is when I was in Italy, I was traveling with my cousin Janine, who was a devout Roman Catholic. Now my mom's words on her because she would always be suspicious of her because she's a devout Roman Catholic. So one night we're drinking in Italy and we have a, we start having these conversations about religion. Now I did the same thing that an atheist would do. I started with, uh, well, you guys hate gays. And, you know, I started all the injections. But once we got past that, I, we just started having a real conversation about what her faith meant to her. It's like, wow, this is, there's something about this. Like, I got where coming from, and I was like, there's something real about this. You know, once you got past the, the societal arguments. 
Does that make sense? The arguments that are baked into the cake, sort of. Yeah, there's there's certain arguments that, of course, that, that are just not going to go away, unfortunately. Um, and I wish they would. Um, and, and some of the ones I definitely wish would go away is all that stuff dealing with like whole gay people. When you have a bitter uh, theist out there, like you know, like Stephen Anderson, talking about you know killing all the gays and stuff like that. Um, that's just that's just pure rhetoric that needs to just die out. That needs to be censored by everybody. That needs to be rebuked. That needs to be um, you know chastised and, and them called out for it. Um, there's certain types of dialogue that is just not appropriate in 2018. Right, and that's it. That's one of them. I mean, you could you can say, look, it, I I don't believe, um, you know, I, I don't I'm, I'm I'm not gay. I don't believe in gay marriage. That that's fine. That's your position, right? But when you advocate violence. Right. You're done in my book. You, there, you, you, there is no discussion on that. Right. Well, that's that's right. That's not a that's not a rational, reasonable point of view. All I'm saying is that when I started talking to my cousin, I took the the, the point of view of the secular world. I was the, I was you. I was an atheist. I was like, she's telling me she's a devout Roman Catholic, and it means so much to her. And I start off with, well, the church is so anti-gay. You know, defend the church position. And she, you know, she didn't do it all that ad- admirably, but I can tell that she's she herself was not necessarily able to get. It. That was really the important part. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, I do got to cut this about short here. I, I uh, my yeah, I was going to show. Uh, by the way, the show is going to be early tonight. Um, we're going to be doing it at three, not five Pacific time. So we're starting in about an hour. Um, all right. So I'll 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 say my little piece, and then I'll let you say goodbye. Um, so this went really well, Steve. We we got a little bit into your spiritual experiences, but also, you know, I wanted to just get a much better sense of who you are and what you do and why you do what you do, which I thought really came through loud and clear. So, um, you know, the, like I say to so far, every atheist or every agnostic now is two categories I've had on my show. It's always gone really well. So the door is always open. Mikasa e su casa. You are welcome back anytime if you want to talk about anything. And uh, you go ahead and say say your piece and say goodbye. I thought this went really well. Well, I do appreciate it. I'm, I, I'm always uh, thrilled and honored and humbled even to, to be asked to, to do these types of things. Um, doesn't matter the size of the channel. Doesn't matter if you know what the beliefs are. If you can have honest dialogue. And, and you clearly know how to do that. So uh, props to you on that. Um, to the theists that are listening that ever watched this weird video, um, you know, I hope they take something to heart by what I said, how to, to advance the argument. If that's what their goal is. Um, I suspect that the people leaving the comments, you know, probably will be supportive uh, for any atheist out there that, you know, runs this narrative. Well, Steve's just a, an atheist. Um, I recommend just go watching my videos and, and learning about the topic a little bit, understanding epistemologically, what agnosticism really is about. Um, don't don't call an agnostic uh, an atheist. Um, it's just wrong. It's not. If, if you want to promote the truth, right? It, it doesn't matter whether you're an atheist or theist. I think both positions want to think that they're promoting truth. But when you're promoting something that clearly is not the truth, and it's because of ideological positions, and we both know this happens. We know a lot of theists even do this. Not in your guys's group, but in the you know the the young earth creationists or the flat earth group. It, it, I think they're just demonstrable liars. Um, don't 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 be like that. Um, you know, if you want to know more about it, message me. If you want to know more about my musicians, you want to know more about the show that we do. Um, Please, by all means, uh, message me. I'm happy to try to talk to anybody. Uh, just not why I'm doing this show because that's difficult. I get messages like, like exactly like one minute before we go on air. I'm like, I don't really have time for this, <laughs> you know. But anyways, great. Thank you for having me on. Um, again, I do really appreciate it, um, and I'm happy to join you anytime. You got a panel or anything time you want. Somebody just to kind of, you know, run. Yeah, it, man. Run Come on. Yeah. School us about school us about whatever. School us on science. So- or philosophy, and uh, yeah, this was this was Thanks, awesome, buddy. Steve. Thank you for coming on, and thank you, live chat, Shane, Stickman, uh, Castle, how had to go, and Saigar, all you guys. Thanks for watching this. Peace, peace, people. Peace. And let me cut this, and we.